One of the two. Oh shit. Oh, this ain't good at all. The chiller upstairs is uh, tripping. Or not tripping, I'm sorry, it's surging. I haven't actually been up there yet. They said they shut it down. I'm checking shaft rotation. If it looks good. Alright. Condenser water. Man. Okay. We're gonna come over here. It's good, it's good. looking for anything at the moment. Go ahead and put it back in auto. Yep, we are connected. All right, we're in calibration. Condenser is flowing. Oil pump's coming on. We can check level on that. Low pump level looks good. Okay. Let's go over here to the tower. Hear the fan going. It's in fast, it's in on. That's weird. I don't hear it kick over to between slow and fast. But when I talked to him, he said his condenser water was in the 80s. Which if his condenser water is in the 80s, he shouldn't have had any trouble. He hasn't had any pump outs. We're still loading up. The coal looks okay. We'll let this run for a minute. Okay, I do expect that water to get pretty high though because of how much load we've got. We'll probably need to go grab the tool bag. I wanna verify that that fan over there is actually running in high speed. Cause that either, it's either not running in high or it's not running in low. One of the two. Oh shit. So, what was that? Oh, that's not good. Did we lose? Shut. Everything shut down. What did you do? Shut the switch off. <laughs> Something. <laughs> I wonder if the freaking main panel just tripped. What the hell? Oh, this ain't good at all. Okay, uh, I need to call the building and get that electrical opened up because something, something major just blew. Yeah, something major just, just blew. I need to get into that main, that main room. Well, this is completely fun. So we had somewhere in here and we're thinking it's one of these main panels here ended up tripping. This one does have an indicator light that it's open on the switch. So we don't know. We're waiting on the electrician before we do anything else. This is a really old panel system and it's just, it's super finicky. So anyway, what I've done is we lost power to our entire mechanical system. Um, Y'all kind of heard that right there as that chiller shut down. Nothing out of the ordinary was going on, right? And then the complaint on the chiller was just that it was having a surging issue. And that's what I was trying to get it to ramp up to, to try to dive into. And now we're here. But uh, what I've done, waiting on the electrician, I went through and shut down all of the major mechanicals. So all of these here are to the air handlers throughout the rest of the building. And all of this here 
is to our pumps and our chillers and then those two down there are to our chillers so this is this is all the mechanical side of the system once the electrician gets here he's going to do some testing of his own and depending on what he finds I'll also dive into what I need to but we got the power back on so far we've got everything back online except for the two chillers I'm gonna shut this down basically I'm just gonna do a basic visual check because what this likely means is that something happened here at the chillers and being the fact that chiller 3 was the one in question I'm nervous that's the one we're gonna be back at well, let's get meter out Doing ground points nothing on that one doesn't register anything to ground on the incoming power side none of the breakers are tripped let's check the motor side we're going to turn power back on to chiller one and let it come online first and then we'll move over to chiller three well this is an interesting development that was not tripped i just went back and looked at the footage i just shot before we put power back to this that was not tripped at all and that is the 460 i believe feeding this controls transformer right here i was i think i'm wrong i think this is the 24 volt protection we're booting up so it, it could have just been because we're putting power to it it may have just caused it to trip out the only thing I can think of we're gonna go up to that other chiller where we were open it up and verify it before we move on any further okay we're back at this one let's get this main panel opened up that says off, but pretty sure it's because that's broke. Do I see anything crispy? Let's get this tested and uh, let's see what's going on. I, nothing immediate to ground. Now you have to be careful when checking the, the output side into these motors going into that this is 123 uh, you, 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 you may get some readings that aren't necessarily true just from experience and the factory tells you don't don't meg or check or do anything to these motors with refrigerant in there you've, you've got to get the system back into a positive pressure so anyway we are going to go ahead and get power turned back on and the system so what I will do is I'll pull my start stop here that way no matter what the front panel says it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna turn on with that pulled as HVACR video says please don't blow up we have all three legs of power back everything's stable let me see if I have any diagnostics we do have a warning probably a power shutdown clock check not found that's historic I'm not worried about those okay it's, it's finishing the calibration on the guide vane actuator we're gonna go ahead and re-enable please don't blow up that's a good one I like that one going through startup procedure now we transition fine 
Got a serious load on this chiller though. Man alive. I'm gonna have to limit the current. Just so we can keep that under control. We need to pull it. We need to pull this down as slowly as we can. Because right now, that is gonna way too much. Way, way too much. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little more current. This machine just been through such a hard life. I just, it makes me nervous being too abusive to it with those kind of water temps. They, the complaint was that it was surging. Now I haven't seen that and they shut it down before we could get here because of the surging. I mean, understandably so. My pump out time doesn't show anything and the water temps he told me they where they were when they shut it down. I mean, they didn't. They weren't excessive, so I, I, I don't know yet. I mean, it's possible a brownout could have caused all this to, to to shut down. I still have the electrician downstairs. I'm not going to let him go until we let this run for a little while and we process some of this load down. I'm going to continue to monitor it and I'll check back in in a few. We're still pulling down on this chiller, but the purge suction temp looks, I mean, really good. It's honestly really high. I come over here to the purge unit. I mean, it feels the same way. Like, it's really high. So... I find that interesting, but our approach looks really good. We're, we're pulling our water temp down. Why this thing was surging, I'm not sure. Not yet. We got a real stable pull down right now. I'm just gonna let it run where it's at. I got a bunch of other places I, I really need to be, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to let this run. I've got one of my other senior techs He's gonna follow up behind me. And I let him look at it when he gets here. And uh, we'll see what he says and I can update later. So it has been a couple of days since we had that major power failure. Uh, everything's doing fine. We're maintaining fine. Condensed water temps are fine. I'm going to leave this at 70% right now. I don't see a need to, to change it. And it's not in. Well, it is being limited, I guess. There. Okay, plug it. Yeah. I don't really want to see that limited like that. That might explain why it hadn't been surging. Now we can go in here to refrigerant report and cycle over. And right here is what I wanted to see, so. We haven't had that, no pump outs. That's just, that, that, that's a really high suction on the purge. It's pretty hot out though too, so. believe it just without putting a, a clamp on it I believe it saturation 44 87 2.2 and it's fine less than one degree on both approaches it's perfect it up a little more to get that uh, that, 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 that temp down the set point's 44 
it normally doesn't sweat like this. This is how humid it is right now in our area. All of this looks fine. Nothing really standing out to me. I'm going to close this back. So it's a little quieter in here, but uh, my, my thought is, is I, I think we just had a power issue. We've, I, I, I think it was either a brownout situation or a surge or something hit the building. Uh, I don't think it was actually equipment uh, cause that, that made the whole thing shut down the way it did. That is a significant issue that we have in our area. We, we've always had significant power problems for some time. But here recently, you know, with our state grid situation, it's only gotten worse. And we, we have a lot more routine power fluctuations and issues and things than we used to have back before this freeze happened. And I know the state's doing a lot to try to correct some of that stuff, but uh, it, it just, it, we're seeing that impact on the, on the back end where we're at. I think it's just, it's just super hot. Uh, and it just, it is what it is. This call I'm going to conclude. From what I see, if they call again later and, and tell us we're having a surging issue, I think it's because the condenser water may be getting a little high with a full load and the, and the, the suction or the, the chill water is kind of cold on the entering side. So below 50 degrees with a 90 degree condenser water, the chiller is really not going to appreciate that all that much. The train will handle it better than most, but uh, my recommendation to them is probably going to be, let's, why don't we try bumping up that chill water set point a little bit, run a little bit higher chill water. Uh, right now, one of the struggles is, and, and why the tower is struggling to keep up so bad, is strictly because the it's so humid right now, and it's a problem we, we face every year. It gets so humid, our wet bulb temperature goes up so high that the, the towers struggle keeping a low enough condenser water, especially with, with any any legitimate load on the, on the equipment. It's just something we gotta deal with, right? There's not really anything we can do about it other than try to make adjustments. Again, running a little bit warmer chill water, you know, 46, 47 degrees, heck, even maybe 48. It's still going to be more than sufficient to, to, to take care of the building cooling load and still dehumidify the way it needs to. Those are the little things we, we try to look at, pay attention to, and those are minor adjustments we can make to try to make the system just work a little smoother, a little bit better. But anyway, regardless, I'm going to wrap up this call. Uh, I appreciate y'all watching it through all the way to the end. And, you know, again, just please, if this is something you might be interested in or you know people who might be interested in it. As an industry, we need people to come and do exactly what I'm doing here. We just, there's not enough of us out there. And, and one big thing about it is when you come and do this, really make sure you take the time to take care of your family and, and, and your kids, your spouse, the whole nine yards. You know, family has got to be first. Otherwise, it just... It's just not as enjoyable doing what we do, you know. If, if, if our family's not in a good good state, good condition, and, and, and we're out here trying to kill ourselves to keep up with what's out here, I mean, it just it makes it makes your life and, and your family's life, everybody's life harder. And a, as an employer, I would much rather you have a stable family life than you know you run your family into the ground trying to trying to keep up with everything else except them. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I'll close it out. I appreciate it, everybody. MTT, make the time. Stay safe out there.